Here we are, another week passing us in 2023, and it is starting out quick. I feel like these two weeks have moved so fast, and now I'm able to bring on our next guest. What are we going to talk about today? Burnout prevention. Surviving burnout. Mommy guilt. How to improve your health through lifestyle changes and so much more. We're ready to break some stigma together. We have Benita joining us today, and she focuses on self-development, health, mental health, fitness, and wellness. By way of background, Dr. V completed her OBGYN residency at Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana. And after almost 20 years of service, she is now focused on lifestyle-based treatments to help others achieve optimal mental and physical well-being. The catalyst for this amazing career move was through the podcast, where she not only educates women about their genocolic health and how their bodies function, but also their overall health and wellness. Be sure to stick around to the end of the episode to find out exactly where to find that podcast. But I'm about ready to kick this show off. Stick around (laughs) for the spotlight show at the halfway point. We have an expert who could help us with lifestyle changes. So I found an awesome article online titled 11 Lifestyle Changes for Improving Mental Health. And then we'll get Dr. V's take on it. But Dr. V, welcome to a mental health break. Ah, hey, welcome. Well, thank you for welcoming me. Hey, Vincent, I love your energy. Oh, of course. I'm excited to have you on here. And to everyone tuning in today, welcome back to another week of shows. This is the podcast where we normalize the conversation around mental health. And I have the amazing opportunity to sit down with a mental health advocate from all around the world each week right here to let you know you're not alone and help you through the tough times in your way. As I mentioned, Dr. V has a lot to offer us today, and we're going to dive right into it. Dr. V, what led you to the world of mental health? Can we touch on your mental health journey? Oh, gosh, absolutely. Well, I'm an OBGYN, like you said, so I take care of women. So uh, we are considered, in some circles, primary care doctors. And so working with women, we actually do a lot of mental health um, and, uh, you know, postpartum depression, anxiety, things like that. And so I was drawn to it. Um, I love working with women. I love delivering babies. I love doing surgery. Um, But the fact of the matter is I'm a wife and I have two children. And I always say this, that when I had the dream and the desire to become a doctor, I never put them in the picture. Like I never thought about my life with my husband and my kids. And so as I started to do the work and love it, and I, you know, got praise from my, my patients and my colleagues, um, that family part that, that was really, um, really key to my success was missing. And so um, I was burned out burned out way before I transitioned out. But COVID uh, 2020 is what kind of popped me into like, you got to get out of this now. And at Tampa Counseling and Wellness, we want to remind you that it's okay to not be okay. Reaching out for support and asking for a little extra help can be overwhelming, but everyone deserves a safe space to heal. We're so honored to be that space for Florida residents. If you want to learn more about our services or you'd like to set up a free consultation with one of our clinicians, you can call or text us at 813-520-2807. We're looking forward to growing with you. Our days went or shorter. Our office hours were from 8 to 1. I got home earlier to be with my kids. We were playing games. We were laughing. They weren't doing their homework like I wanted them to, but hey, (laughs) that was a whole nother mental health story. But um, it just felt good. It felt good. And um, I was just tired of, um, I was tired of the rat race. Uh, I, I will say that I think, you know, was I depressed? I don't know. I felt like I didn't have enough time to be depressed. I wasn't getting good sleep, right. which can put you at risk for depression. I had migraine headaches, which, you know, when I transitioned out of traditional medicine, they got better. Um, so definitely mental health was a part of it. That was a catalyst. But I've had a lot of physical benefit um, from just creating the life that I want to live. And I think this is a great lesson and advice for everyone listening on. So you're saying 
quality of life and doing things that make you happy, improve your mental health. That is what I'm saying. I concur. <laughs> and that's what I try to preach all the time. We're not preach. I should say just share where people who follow my journey. I went to school, finance, MBA. I wanted this corner office my whole life with this money attached to it. And when I got a taste of it, all the other variables attached to it made me as unhappy as I've ever been. So that's when I scaled back, started doing this. And I was confident in the process that if I put in the work, I'll make those same gains financially, but I'll also be doing something I like. And here I am today. Now, three years, we were just talking about of weekly shows with great guests, just like we have today. I want to touch on something before moving on, though. You mentioned you were home with your kids during COVID. What was that like with them in their mental health work? School was just stopped. They couldn't see their friends. So that's a good question. So just to clarify, I wasn't technically at home because I was still an essential worker. Right, right. Um, so I would leave the house um, and sometimes I'd have to do deliveries until five or still take calls. So I wasn't always home. Um, for me, it was the homework and they just really kind of zoned out. Like it was like school didn't wasn't even a priority. They still kept in contact with their friends, like my younger daughter. Um, she's 12 now. Uh, Roblox. You know about Roblox? Roblox is a game where you're they can play games with their friends like they all have an avatar. So they were interacting. They were FaceTiming. Um, my son was very active in basketball and he couldn't do that. Um they got bored very quickly. Uh, I don't think that we saw the ramifications of that until we went back to school. It seemed like they were doing okay. We would check in. And then when they tried to integrate back into quote unquote normal life, that's when it was like, oh, wait, there's some things that they've missed, some social skills that they've missed. Um, they've gotten out of certain habits that you know made them happy. I can certainly understand that. I do my work in schools, whether it's teaching or speaking. And I noticed that the attentiveness of students isn't there, just certain habits forming. Everybody's moving around, can't sit still. It's it's a tough time for a kid, and I'm hoping that with the right resources and conversations like these, we can help share the right information with parents out there. Why Absolutely. some of my some of my passion and goals behind my books I write is to help these kids, let them know they're not alone. It's okay to have mm -hmm. feelings and emotions, but. This is what we are as adults to help them find ways to improve their mental health, things that work for them. I'd love to know what works for you, though. Some of your favorite things to improve your mental health, whether it's short term or long term, anything our audience can take away from. Oh, man. So um, let me just comment real quick on what you said. And, and this is specifically to those who are in an industry where they serve others. You're, you're giving, you're doing good work, but you can still be out of alignment with your purpose. Yep. I'm bringing life into the world. I'm bonding with women and families and it's all good stuff, but I was supposed to be doing something different. Um, and when I, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but when I started going down this journey of aligning to my purpose, I started exercising. Like I love Pilates now. I try to go at least three to four days a week. I'm all toned. I'm a woman. I'm in my late 40s. So that's a big thing for me to <laughs> change my shape. Sure. And, and I'm exercising. Um, I started training for a half marathon, which I ran at the end of 2021. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah. And so I just I got outside more and I just focused on my health and wellness. Um, cooking, love cooking, which my daughter is now an aspiring chef. Um, oh, nice. We still have tried to continue to do game night. Uh, we had a little dry spell there for a while, but I love I love spending time with my family and with my husband. Yes, all those things you said, quality time, great hobbies, cooking, and now she's turning that into a career. It'll be great to see that unfold, I'm sure. What <laughs> would you have for advice for anyone out there today who's tuning in who is struggling, though, someone who's having a tough time seeing that light? Absolutely. So... I have I have lots of things to share, but the, the core thing that I think has to happen first is that we have to acknowledge that voice inside that's saying you're going in the wrong direction. Yes. Which for so long I heard it, I felt it, and it's just like, but I've gone to medical school. I've I've this is 12 years of schooling, and I'm really good at this. Um, but it was wearing me out. 
And I heard the voice and just ignored it. And so I always say your spirit knows. uh, And it's almost like, you know, when you're on your navigation and it's saying turn right and you don't turn right and you keep going. Okay, make a U-turn and you keep going. The most important thing is to acknowledge that voice, respect what it has to share with you, Mm -hmm. uh, and then do the work um, to to follow the instructions or the feelings that you have in your heart. Yes, and it's never too late to make a change, everyone out there. If you nope. feel that, it's you have one life and you want to live it the way that you want to live it. No point of doing something that isn't fulfilling you and going through the motions just to create a, a paycheck at some point may eat you up. Today's guest is proof that if you work hard enough, you can go ahead, switch over and still find even more happiness, more success. And I think it's now a great time to head into the spotlight story before we hop off today and hear one area she would like to shed light on relating to mental health. As we have a lifestyle changes expert on the show today, I found a great article online at from the F- AFPA, excuse me, talking about 11 lifestyle changes for improving mental health And then I'll bring our guest back on, get her take on it. And you're going to notice, I'm going to say these here. We'll dive into a few, but we've already talked about a few, which means they have to be a little bit correct. At least we hear change your diet, start exercising, find ways to deal with stress, get more sleep, keep a journal, consider therapy, have a strong support system, get a hobby volunteer unplug yourself and be honest about mental health there are a lot of great ones here we talked about started exercising we heard about getting more sleep let's touch on fine ways to deal with stress stress is not conducive to proper mental health it actually aggravates the symptoms of mental illness one of the methods you can adopt to deal with stress is meditation Even with a 30-minute meditation session per day, it can reduce stress and institute and improve mental resilience. You can take up yoga, which apart from being a powerful stress reduction tool, excuse me, again, I'm eating my words, is a very good exercise routine. It could help you adapt a more positive outlook and keep you engaged in a world around you. I will also now touch on keep a journal because as a writer, I use Writing as a great mental health tool, exercise has more mental health benefits than we talked on than physical for me, but expressing yourself through keeping a record of your thoughts and how you are feeling can be a healthy way to deal with stress. Start keeping a journal and use it to identify triggers. You can even go back to it from time to time to reflect on your progress, which helps keep you motivated. And reflection, I think, as an entrepreneur especially, is key for me, taking the time to not just go, 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 which in my past a lesson learned to stop. How can I tweak things? How can I improve things? These are all great. And obviously the volunteer, I'm big into volunteering. I'm actually excited to start with Big Brothers Big Sisters. I uh, just finished my orientation and now I'm starting my interview next week. So that's going to be fun for me. All these things I try to embody the best I can. Let's now bring back on our guest. What are your takeaways from this article? Oh man. So that's lifestyle medicine in a nutshell. Uh, lifestyle medicine is a new specialty. And basically we focus on all of those things you said to improve health, treat chronic disease and reverse disease. Uh, and it is not to be taken lightly. This is not fluff. It's not mm-hmm. fruit fruit stuff. We actually have studies and evidence to support everything that you just said. Uh, and you don't have to do them all at one time. You know, try to get in the bed 30 minutes earlier, yep. an hour earlier. Um, try to add vegetables to your diet. You don't have to subtract anything, just add more vegetables. You know, put some tomatoes and lettuce on your hamburger. Uh, get yeah. more fiber in your life. I'm telling you, y'all, when when your GI tract is flowing nicely, <laughs> life feels amazing. Uh, so yeah, all of those things. Um, it's getting back to the basics. Yep. You know, there are people who are not in third world countries who are living long, healthy, wonderful lives, and they don't have an access to a third of what we have. Mm-hmm. We spend the most money on our health care here in America, and we have some of the poorest outcomes, some of the poorest. So get back to the basics, sleep, exercise, eat well, work on managing your stress, have good relationships and avoid things that that keep you disconnected, like risky substances, like weed. Everybody's talking about weed and, you know, I'm not going to argue with 
um, some of the medicinal purposes, because I, I do believe that they are, but most people who are using it are using it to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. They're not present. Um, so alcohol, um, marijuana, any drugs um, that kind of keep you out of your life um, at a high level um, is, are some things that you want to remove. So absolutely. Um, what I tell my patients, you know, if you did these things, I would see you once a year. That's it. Imagine how no surgeries, no medications, mm -hmm. uh, and, and life is full. Uh, the last one that I like to highlight is relationships and having okay. meaning in your life. Uh, I think COVID showed us that being alone is not good for your mental health. When you don't have people that you, that you can call on, you don't feel like you have support, you're not laughing. You know, these are things that can make you sad ultimately and your brain actually changes and it can change who you are. Not knowing your purpose, not having meaning in life. Like the minute you find out why you were born and what you're supposed to do in the earth, your life changes. And Thanks. that's what I saw for my life. And a part of what I have created is a program for women to figure out what are their gifts, what are their purpose, and create a vision for their life. And once you have clarity on what you are here to do, what you need to do, all the other fluff falls away. You know, we talk about stress. Half of the stuff that we're stressed about are, are things that we're not even supposed to be involved in, you know. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be a chef over here and you're a lawyer <laughs> Like nothing wrong with lawyers. But if your gift and your calling is in creating food that people will enjoy and um, will be healthy from, then you're just out of alignment. And once your soul aligns with that, then you have meaning. And guess what? Once you start to go after it, I have found and I've, I've noticed this from my colleagues and from other people. Once you find your purpose and go after it, other things fall into place. You start exercising. You want to eat well. You start spending more time with your family. It's almost like it's almost like this is the root cause. <laughs> you being out of alignment. And as soon as you figure that out, your life kind of restructures to rise and meet you there so you can accomplish that goal. What an incredible answer. That's such value right there. Everyone listening on, do the little things that she's saying back to basics. We're talking little baby steps in the right directions can lead to big wins. Don't become overwhelmed by trying 15 new things at once. Five, 10 minutes of one thing for a week or two, add one more. That's something I've learned through Lessons Learned. I'm sure many can resonate listening on. But before we sign off, I'd like to ask you to shed light on any mental health topic you want to bring some awareness to it before we get your contact info. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the floor. Absolutely. You know, I'm a physician and in our healthcare system, burnout is a big topic. Uh, and we know in the healthcare system, you know, people just were working long, crazy hours, seeing horrible things and their mental health suffered. And I have devoted a portion of my journey to addressing that. What I've realized, though, is that burnout affects people of all disciplines, of all careers. Stay-at-home moms can get burned out. Right. And burnout looks like you're just so worn out that you really just don't start to care. You don't care anymore. Like, you don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't light your fire. Um, you actually can slip into depression. You can actually start to slip into depression. Uh, and, and unfortunately, what we've seen is it can lead to um, suicidal ideation or thoughts of wanting to kill yourself. And it ultimately can be life threatening. You know, that's one thing that I always want to say. Depression is life threatening. And that's kind of making um, that might be a little bit dramatic. But if it's untreated and it gets severe, then that's exactly what can happen. And so um just acknowledge that you're burned out or that you want something different. And I've, I'm glad that we live in a time now where mental health is a priority. I mean, you can go on your phone and get a therapist. Now, I don't know about the quality of the therapist, but of everybody course. needs someone to talk to. Uh, and I think just acknowledging 
that I have to make a change. I'm burned out. I tell you, Vincent, I once I got on the other side, I could have kicked myself. I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? I was so scared. Mm -hmm. I was so scared. I was a breadwinner for my household. You know, we have a multiple six figure lifestyle and, you know, I'm a Christian and God was just like, I got you. And I'm telling you, when I crossed over, I I just I couldn't believe um, what I was settling for. I could not believe what I was settling for and that I am now making um, I'm, I'm making a different impact which I think really is more in a line with my purpose. And so it's a win for me. It's a win for my family. It's a win for all the people I come in contact with. What an inspiring way to end the show. You're doing great work and congratulations on not only finding your purpose, but for having so much positivity and happiness bringing into the world. Where can everybody find more about you, your website, social media, anything you'd like to share? Absolutely. So my podcast is Office Visits with Dr. V. It's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. And my website is the same, officevisitswithdrv.com, social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, We're expanding to YouTube. Um, You can connect with me. Uh, You can also connect with me through my website and um, create a discovery call. Uh, I am. I have opened up more cohorts for my uh, my course called Delivering Destiny, the prescription for your health and happiness, um, where I cultivate. You know, we cultivate relationships with women and help you figure out. You know, why you're here and get on the road to happiness. And so, um, you can find more information about that through my website. Be sure to head right to her website. Check out all she has to offer. And we are at a mental health break and at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube. Be sure to keep sticking around. There will be guest after guest after guest continuing to come share their story, the courage it takes to let you know you are not alone. They are here to help you and they will continue to do so. Thank you, Dr. V and talk soon. My pleasure. Thank you.